Hi, my name is Christina Mihalik, and I'm here today to talk to you about poetry. So why am I talking to you about poetry? Well, when I talk to Dr. Martins about my background, I have a master's in English with a concentration in poetry. She asked me to do a guest lecture on the subject. So without further ado, let's talk about poetry. So in our discussion post this week, Dr. Martins asks if we would use poetry in the library with children, and if we would, how would we go about doing so? Obviously, since I'm passionate about the subject, I would say yes! I would definitely use poetry in the library, and I would definitely use poetry in story times and programs, and I'll get to why in a few minutes. But first, I want to bring up a subject that is circulated in academia and even in the news media, and this subject is the death of poetry. A lot of critics think that poetry is dying in our society. And do you think it is? And if you do, why do you think this has happened? Let's break it down. A long time ago, poetry was viewed in culture as one of the highest art forms. And poets were admired like rock stars. Take John Keats, the romantic poet, for example. He admired poets. He literally followed them around in almost a stalker, creepy-like manner and he strove to be like the poets he admired. He even wrote about these poets in his works. Uh, he wrote about the first time he read Chapman's Homer and how amazing and beautiful it was to him. But do we feel this way today? Do people go around chasing poets as they would, say, a famous rock star today or maybe someone like Taylor Swift? Uh, no, not so much. Uh, critic uh, Dan Joya writes about this in his essays. He says that, he believes that poetry actually does matter and it is still alive today. Um, he thinks that the reason is that um, poetry matters because it really only requires one skill and that skill is speech. Uh, he also says that poetry should be present in the classroom because it teaches the skills of language. It also teaches the skills of speaking and it also teaches imagination and empathy, all things that we want to teach in the library as well. So, still, there are others that believe that poetry is dead and is no longer part of our culture. But here's the thing, though. Whether or not it is dying, uh, if you just take a glance at the poetry material written for children, you'll find that the art is not dead, and as library science professionals and possible future children's librarians, I think that we can still do our part to bring poetry into the classroom, or in this case, into library programs. So for the remainder of the time, I'm going to highlight some current children's poetry books and discuss some ways in which you can use these in the library to get kids interested or at least hearing some poetry. So let's start with story time. For those of you working in a library right now, do you use poetry in your story times? Because if not, I definitely think you should. In fact, the um, well-known Cuban-American poet Margarita Engel, she said that she thinks it's a privilege when children actually listen to a poem and ask interesting, intelligent questions, and they think about things, and they are aware of the world and their surroundings. So Margarita Engel, as you know, wrote the Bell Tree award-winning book, Drum Dream Girl. And as you can see, it's a beautiful piece of art and a beautiful poem. The first page, she says, On an island of music, in a city of drum beats, the drum dream girl dreamed. It already starts beautiful. And as you can see, the illustrations are so colorful and eye-catching, and this would definitely be a great one to use in story time or as an introduction to poetry in story time because it would engage your audience. All right, so next, here I have Poems for All Seasons, When Green Becomes Tomatoes by Julie Foliano. And really quickly, I'm just going to read one of her poems here. It says, the title is July 9th. It's about a firefly. See the picture? And if a firefly should one night appear suddenly in your bedroom, flickering you out of awake and well into dreaming, don't forget that even things lost but still glowing, love a small whispered thank you. 
floating somewhere between drifting and dream. So this would be a great one to use in story time if you're highlighting seasons. So again, that's when green becomes tomatoes. She's also an award-winning poet. All right, so let's move on. Um, we have one called Wet Cement, a mix of concrete poetry. And this is actually a fun little play on words here because it's using the word concrete poems. And as some of you may already know, a concrete poem is when you use poems in a fun picturesque way. It's really the picture that's giving you the effect. Here we have Hanger. And by the way, this is by B Bob Rashka. It says, I hang out in blue jeans and comfy old shirts. I hang out in blouses and long frilly skirts. I hang out in sport coats and sweaters and shawls. I even hang out with no clothes on at all. So this would be a really fun one to also introduce kids to poetry and maybe even do a program where they can make their own cement poems and you could read and highlight some of Bob's poems here. All right, so one more about story time. All right, so we've got The Death of a Hat. Has anyone read this one before? It is definitely a great one. It's illustrated by Krish Roshka. It's incredibly unique because throughout these poems, they highlight different times. So it's basically kind of like taking children on a timeline of poetry. So we start with the Middle Ages. It's a little bit convoluted, so it might be best to actually just read these poems to the kids instead of showing them all the written text. But here, I'll give you a quick example. First one is from the Middle Ages. It's called A Bookworm by Anonymous. So I'm guessing it's so old they don't even know the author. It says, a moth ate a word. To me, that seemed a curious happening when I heard of that wonder, that a worm should swallow the word of a man. A thief in the dark eat a thoughtful discourse, and the strong base it stood on. He stole, but he was not a whit the wiser when the word had been swallowed. So that would be a fun one to read in story time as well, and also to kind of take them through the different times, because it even goes into the Victorian period and just further on from there. All right, so let's move on to our next subject here. We've got programs. Okay, so here I have Hungry Math Poems. Sorry about this covering the title here. Okay, so Hungry Math Poems, what is this about? This would be a great program where you could focus on math but also make it fun for kids in school. Uh, we've got poems that are kind of puzzles and deal with math, like money. Also, we have um, different poems that talk about graphs. It's really fun. So here's one called The Balanced Bee. Okay, so it says three circles, tall, not wide, six legs, three per side, two plus two wings on its back, bands of yellow, white, and black, compound eyes to spy the view, antenna, not one, always two. Now fold your paper, it's plain to see. Bees are balanced. It's symmetry. So this would definitely be fun to use for older kids, probably maybe second through fifth grade, to highlight some math and talk about it and get them excited about it. All right, so next here we've got ooh, word poems on food. Okay, so we've got the popcorn astronaut, astronaut. So this would be really fun. You could easily use this in a program to talk about healthy food and also not so healthy food. Um, you can teach them different ways to uh, kind of play with your food. I'm not sure if we want to encourage that, but who knows? All right, so here we've got 21 things to do with apples. Sorry, I'm kind of leaning over here. My camera's a little bit wonky. All right, so, oh, and by the way, this is by Deborah Ruddle. All right, so 21 things to do with apples. Wash it, dry it, apple pie it, bite it, gnaw it, paint it, draw it, twirl it, float it, caramel coat it, lunch it, crunch it, Sunday brunch it, peel it, slice it, sell it, spell it, show and tell it, tug of war it, just ignore it. So that's another fun poem to hear. We've got a lot in here about food. We've got brownies on this page. 
So again, some really fun ones here that you can use in programs where you talk about food, you talk about healthy food, unhealthy food, all that good stuff. Teach them how to even make healthy food. There's so many options. All right. So I'm about to wrap this up, but before I do so, I wanted to highlight some juvenile poetry books we have here. So of course, Jacqueline Woodson, uh, Locomotion is a great one. It's about a boy who lost his family in a fire and how he perseveres through all that and learns to see the beauty in life after this tragedy. And of course, I'm sure you know about Brown Girl Dreaming. Of course, won the Newberry. So definitely read this one if you haven't, and also listen to the audiobook. These would be two really good book discussions for a program. And um, just before I head out, I want to say thank you so much for listening to this lecture. And I'm going to read you a poem by Sherman Alexie. Here you can use this with teens. You can have them read this poetry book and also uh, use his book, um, Part-time Indian. I lost it for a second. So you can read both of those and talk about his poetry and talk about his novel. So here we have Indian Boy Love Song. Everyone I have lost in the closing of a door, the click of the lock is not forgotten. They do not die, but remain within the soft edges of the earth, the ash of house fires and cancer and sin and forgiveness huddled under old blankets dreaming their way into my hands, my heart, closing tight like fists. So there you have it, Sherman Alexie. So thanks again for listening. If you guys have any questions or you want some more resources on poetry, I definitely be, would be happy to talk to you about it and give you some authors and titles as well. So thanks again. Bye.